Okay, so as this video is dropping, the announcement literally just finished. Asus has announced the Zenfone 11 Ultra and I got it right here. So let's have a look at the phone. The glass is a Gorilla Glass Victus 2, nice and durable. On the side, you've got the usual volume and power buttons, except they're shifted down a little bit. So if you're doing any vlogging and you have this in some kind of a phone mount, you really run the risk of pressing that power button down with the clamp. So you might need to do that a little off center if that's the kind of thing you're gonna do. On the bottom, you got the USB-C port way off to the left. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I tried to shove this USB-C cable right into the middle of this phone so many times only to realize that it's not there. What is in the center though is your SIM tray and then you've got your speakers right next to that and right next to that lordy lordy look what we have a headphone jack. The back of the phone something special not only is it a beautiful design that pattern has just a little bit of a reflective quality in it but what's cool is this thing is beyond fingerprint resistant this is fingerprint proof I've been smudging my fingers all over this thing for days and not so much as a mark has shown up. And if you look at the camera layout it looks a lot different from the previous Zen phones which only had two lenses this one sports an extra one so in addition to the 50 megapixel f1.9 24 millimeter wide lens and the 13 megapixel f2.2 13 millimeter ultra wide lens you have a 32 megapixel f2.4 telephoto lens it's a slightly different aspect ratio from my Samsung too, so it's a little bit more of a slender phone, so you hold it really nice. It's a nice hold. And if you wanna know what else they changed from the Zenfone 10, well, quite a lot. First off, anyone who's seen any of the reviews of the Zenfone 10 heard it's one of the best compact phones going right now. This is no compact phone. As an example, here's the Zenfone 11 Ultra. Here's the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Ooh. The Zenfone 11 Ultra upgraded to a 6.78 inch E6 LTPO OLED display compared to the 5.9 inch E4 display that the Zenfone 10 had. The 11 Ultra has a 94% screen to body ratio compared to the Zenfone 10's 90%. And the upgrades keep coming. The peak brightness of the Zenfone 11 Ultra is 2,500 nits. That's comparable again to the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which was 2,600 nits. So you got a really bright screen on your hands and it supports up to 144 Hertz refresh rate, but that's only for games that require that for everything else it does 120 hertz refresh rate and if we look at the guts of the phone the asus zenfone 11 ultra snapdragon 8 gen 3 is a big boost from the gen 2 it'll give you up to 30 percent improvement in cpu performance and the upgrade to the adreno 750 gpu from the 740 should get you another 25 percent boost the phone comes in two versions you got a 256 gig phone with 12 gigs of ram or a 512 gig phone with 16 gigs of ram this is the latter but let's take a look at the UI. I really enjoy this animated lock screen that they have. And what's really cool is once you swipe to unlock your phone, it actually animates again to be your wallpaper. The animations between apps and going back and between menus and stuff like that are all really smooth and fast. The only thing that's been tripping me up is the three buttons on the bottom. I'm used to the button on the right being my back button. And now that's actually the one to bring up all my applications. So that's been an adjustment, but it's not a design flaw. It's just a me thing. Now, seeing as this is an Asus phone, you're gonna expect that this is gonna be a good gaming phone. And it is. I put the phone through its paces using all sorts of different games. I play Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, Shadow Gun Legends, Real Racing 3, all games that are fairly demanding on a phone's GPU. And the Zenfone 11 Ultra came through with flying colors every single time. The animations were clean, there was no lag. The brighter OLED screen made this feel more like a handheld console than a phone. And as much as I gamed on the phone or took video or streamed video or anything I did, the phone never got hot on me. It got a little bit warmer than room temperature, but I mean, we were pushing it pretty hard. So if you were only looking for a phone that could really handle games, then you'd probably be able to look no further than this, but we still got a lot of other stuff to talk about. And you don't have to take my word for the phone's performance, the phone itself is gonna tell you. Using the Asus Game Genie, all you have to do is swipe Wipe down from either of the top corners of the screen and it's going to bring up the Game Genie Hub and you'll see all sorts of options here. You can change performance settings, speed up performance settings, you can create macros, screen record, you can add a crosshair, you can even shut off alerts and calls while you're gaming, and the whole time you can get real-time stats for your CPU and GPU. Now in the game, this hub's not gonna be up obviously because it covers most of the screen, but what you can do is actually turn on a little mini hub. And with that one, you can monitor the CPU and GPU performance, your battery life, the phone's internal temperature, and even see how many frames per second you're gaming at. What's also cool is it's movable, so if it's not in a convenient location for the game you're playing, you can put it elsewhere. And for everything you're gonna do on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, you're gonna need some pretty serious battery life, and serious battery life is what this thing has. The Zenfone 11 Ultra has a 5,500 milliamp hour battery, Compare again to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And this thing is seriously long lasting. For example, I've had this phone unplugged for about an hour and a half. I don't know if you can read it or not. It's still at 100%. <laughs> 
And we talked about this when I reviewed the S24 Ultra and it's really the same here. No matter how much I beat this thing up when I was testing it, doing a ton of video, doing a ton of streaming, whatever. And I still went to bed at night with at least 30% of battery life left in this thing. But let's talk about the camera. Overall, it takes great pictures with really vibrant and accurate color. I wouldn't put it at the level of the big flagships like the iPhone 15 Pro Max or the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. But keep in mind, this is an upgrade from a compact phone into, I don't even think we call it a flagship, but it's a good phone. And to be honest, as of making this video, I don't know how much the phone costs. It hasn't been announced yet. But if it's gonna be a percentage cheaper than those other two phones, then the difference in quality is gonna be more than worth it. You can see here the difference between having portrait mode on and off. And also it's worth noting, these two photos are actually in pretty low light, so it's really nice how well it compensated. And the really cool thing is you can actually adjust the bokeh yourself. It's basically on a slider, so you can essentially change your own depth of field. And then if we look at a little low light photography, I actually went into my bathroom with the lights off and took a picture of my awesome curtain. And here's the same picture in the same lighting scenario with the night mode turned on. And if you look at the video, I say the same thing as I did with the photography. It's not as good as the premium, premium phones, but it's still better than so many other phones. The only thing I'll say about the video is that it was pretty slow to adapt to certain situations. For example, when I was standing in really bright light, but then moved to the shadow, it took a really long time to kind of compensate for that exposure. And I could see those changes as I was moving around and it was quite a bit after I moved into each different lighting condition. And the same thing with the portrait video, as long as I was able to see my son's face, it did a pretty good job. You could see it was adjusting just a little bit, but the second the camera lost his face, it just shut off the bokeh. It did a much better job when he was just in one place and I was just in one place and we weren't trying to move around. So that's something you need to be mindful of in case you ever want to use it. But then we get into the stabilization and the stabilization on this thing is fantastic. First as a control, I'll show a little bit of my son running around with the stabilization turned off. And then you have Asus's adaptive stabilization and you can see it's a whole lot more steady than with nothing at all. And then you have the hyper steady and this just looks like it was straight up sitting on a gimbal when I was running around. But in fact, it was just a handheld camera. The only thing to note about the hyper steady is that you can only shoot in 1080p with it. So if you're shooting in 4K or 8K, just stick with the adaptive stabilization. It's good enough. But now for one last look, let's put all three of those together for a comparison. And then you've got integration with your PC. And if you want to do that, look no further than Glidex by Asus. All you have to do is download the app on the PC. The app should already exist on the phone. And then from there, you have all kinds of connection options. First off, you have mirroring, which puts the screen from your phone directly onto the PC. But what's really cool is you actually can control the phone from the PC using your mouse and keyboard. And then you have Extend, which actually makes your phone an additional monitor for your PC. And then you have your file transfer. This is very similar to QuickShare. You can instantly transfer files between your phone and your PC back and forth. I used this exclusively to get all the photo and video off of the phone onto my PC to edit and it's been fantastic. Communication, this gives you the ability to answer calls or send texts directly from your PC. And then you even have shared cam, which can actually turn your phone's camera into the webcam for your PC. It shows up as shared cam in any place where you select your video capture devices. And there's so much more to talk about with GlideX. If you're interested in a tutorial, let me know down in the comments and I can actually make one. And while you're down in the comments, why don't you hit the like and subscribe, ring the notification bell so you know when I have new videos coming out. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about all the things that Asus has in development right now. They have a whole line of AI features that are going to be coming out in a future update. I've gotten to take a peek at the beta version of quite a few of these, so let's talk about it. First off, they're offering AI translation. Just like Samsung's Galaxy AI, you'll be able to make a phone call and it'll translate into another language. And then when they speak, it'll translate back to your language and you'll be able to hear it. Also seen in Galaxy AI, you have the ability to take your voice notes and transcribe the voice notes as well as summarize them. Asus has its own semantic search and that lets you go through apps and settings and even your photos and use very plain language to search for things. And there's an AI wallpaper you can select from a number of prompts and then it actually generates for you a wallpaper that best suits your personality. There's no timeline right now and a release for those features, so just stay tuned for the news. The Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra is available right now for order. As I said before, I am not aware of the price as of this recording. The announcement will actually reveal the price, so I'll make sure to pop that down in the description so you can check it out there. And like I said, while you're down there, hit the like, hit the subscribe. But if you've already hit the like, don't do it again because that unlikes it. We don't need that.
Let me know what you think about the Zenfone 11 Ultra down in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say about the phone. And also, since this is only my third phone review, let me know what it is you guys want to see in a phone review, and I'll make sure that I can include it in the future ones. But that's going to wrap us up for this time. Why don't you hang out with me still and check out this video? This is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. I leave you with that, but until next time, my friends, let's get to work.